Hey guys, welcome back to Double D in the Morning. This is Double D in the Friday Morning, episode 38, The History of Cartoons, part 29, The Story of Rob Renzetti. Rob Renzetti was born on September 12, 1967, in Chicago, Illinois, but raised in Addison, Illinois. In this video, I'm going to talk about his contributing factor to art history and animation history. He was an art history major originally in the University of Illinois at the Urbana Campaign School. After graduating at the University of Illinois, he attended the Columbia College Chicago Art School where he met future animator and colleague and partner, Judy Tartakovsky. They both got accepted into the California Institute of Arts or Cal Arts where they were roommates. This is a picture of Jindy Tartakovsky, the creator of Samurai Jack and Dexter's Lab. He and Rob Renzetti would work together on Samurai Jack and Dexter's Lab after they both graduated. And this is a picture of Craig McCracken, the creator of Powerpuff Girls. One of his former Cal Arts friends, and he would work on his show and shows Powerpuff Girls and Foster's Home for Imaginary Kids too. He was a director and a writer and a producer on some Jindy Tartakovsky shows, Samurai Jack and Dexter's Lab. His very first work in animation was on this show, The Batman the Animated Series in Spain. He animated it on five episodes of the show. Although, like I said just a minute ago, his first show was technically Batman the Animated Series, and that is true. His first full show from 93 to 95 was Two Stupid Dogs. And he had a lot more behind the scenes technical involvement with this one. He was an executive producer, a producer, and a director. And he wrote for the show. This is Fred Seibert, the person that gave him his first really, really big break in the cartoon short subject monitor of cartoons. When Fred met Rob, he was the head of the Hanna-Barbera division of Cartoon Network at the time and told him about his What a Cartoon show he was creating which was a 48 episode short subject cartoon show called What a Cartoon which started out as world premiere tunes and he wanted him to do some shorts. He saw his work and liked his work. And this is the title and in, in intro card for each cartoon. A character from the short that the creator was creating would voice the phrase what a cartoon in each individual syllable. His very first mainstream short subject cartoon was Mina in the Count, a parody of Dracula and Mina, the character from the book that was friends with him, called Interlude with a Vampire. This was also the pilot for the short subject series of his Mina in the Count the series of that in word. In this particular cartoon, Mina and the Count, the Count is the vampire and Mina is the little girl that's six. He gets mistakenly scheduled to bite the neck of the little six year old girl, I mean seven year old girl and uh, he ends up becoming friends with her because of her innocent, truly temple-like nature. He just didn't have the heart to make her into a vampire. And this is the pilot that explains how they became friends. Fred Seibert picked him up for another show of, of short subjects called Oh Yeah Cartoons that ran from 98 to 2001. And this is the title card for Oh Yeah Cartoons, which he pitched the pilot idea for my Life is Teenage Reward and more five more Mina in the Count short. In the second short of Mina in the Count, my best friend, she's telling a report about what she did this summer with her friend, the vampire. After her report, her class starts picking on her because they don't believe that she's friends with a vampire. But he comes to her rescue and bullies the bully and scares the pants off of him. She goes home and tells the Count about the bad day at school and he says he'll help her and tells her his scaring techniques and she tries to imitate the count but it doesn't work. so later she goes back home and tells him it didn't work so he comes and meets the boy in a gym and he finishes the job he doesn't turn him into a vampire but he scares the pants off of him I couldn't find the title card for the third one but this is the third one Frankenfrog where Mina's pet frog our class pet frog dies, but the Count has an idea a la Frankenstein to bring him back, and that's the plot of the cartoon. It doesn't work originally for him, but she does the same thing, and it comes, 
he comes back alive for Mina, even though it didn't for the Count. And it's a reference to Frankenstein. Towards the end, he gets taken in by the actual Frankenstein and becomes his pet. The fourth segment was called the Yule's Tribunal, where he is put on trial and deemed if he's actually worth being considered a scary demon-like character in the fantasy world because they find out that he's friends with a human and not just any human, a little girl. And by the end of this one, he gets his way and they remain friends because Mina charms the other ghouls and they all become friends with her. The fourth one is the vampire who came to dinner where he gets interacting with the human world and has a dinner with her dad and her older sister who unbeknownst to, to her and him the older sister follows in love with the Vlad the Count and he <coughs> cautiously but elegantly sits at the table and eats some human food but everything unbeknownst to the Count has garlic in it which he is deadly allergic to. All become friends with her. And things end up being fine. But in between the meal, the older sister and Mina fight over the count. Eventually he just has to leave because of his allergy to the food. The very last short, the very last short right before he, a few years later, made his last big short on Oya cartoons, which we'll get to that later, his very last minute in the count short was playing a hunch where Igor, fed up with his human inter interaction with Mina, the little girl, hates her coming over there playing into his castle. She so comes over one day and the count hides Mina from Igor, his assistant. And this is the backdoor pilot short, My Neighbor Was a Teenage Robot, that became My Life as a Teenage Robot. This was the oh yeah version of the first episode that ended up being the first episode of the series. Notice how it's kind of anime like drawn. This was the oh yeah short version. This is a steal f from that. It was originally re reanimated and redone as the pilot for, for the show, My Life as a Teenage Robot. Because in the mid 2000s, from 03 to 09, it got picked up as a show. From August 1st of 03 to May 2nd of 09, to be more precise. This is the main title card for the picked up version of the show, My Life as a Teenage Robot. Same premise, but it's more elaborated because it was got picked up as a show. The main character is XJ9 that changed her name to Jenny Wakeman. Because the last name Wakeman was because Professor Wakeman, Nora Wakeman, they live in a utopia sci-fi town for the most part they would make you like you think that but they are overrun by the cluster prime queen vexus that comes to earth trying to recruit her as one of the robot people and they're trying to take over the world she wants a robot and people harmony and it believes that, that will eventually but cluster prime is a bit more realistic shall we say with that their kind of approach and realizes that humans and robots will always be adversaries but because of the show its main protagonist is a teenager she's a little even though she's a robot she's a little childish and a little innocent and immature if you will but the show also has forms of racism. There's a hangout called Mesbers, and the main Mr. Mesber, the main person there, is racist towards robots and any kind of weird things, space bikers, anything. He hates anything that's not human. She also has a friend named Brad, and a a friend named Tucker. That that's Brad's the older brother, and Tucker is the or Tuck is the uh, younger brother. Brad is the person that's the teenager that kind of idolizes Jenny, the robot. And Tucker is your stereotypical cons 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 conspiracy theorist that 
thinks about aliens and your sci-fi conspiracy theories that really, for a boy his age, just really gets into it a little too much. In her high school that she goes to, she has a one-sided crush on a character named Sheldon, aka the Silver Shell. She likes her other two friends and she likes Sheldon. He's kind of a bit of a science nerd. But he likes, it's a one-sided love. He likes her more than she really likes him. And they're just friends. But Sheldon wants it to be more. But he wants it to be more. The very serious finale that aired on Nicktoons instead of regular Nickelodeon was the Battle of Cluster Plum. And it ended in a happy ending. <coughs> just like all the uh, other ones. And at the end of this one, Vexus was overthrown and, and her daughter was made the new queen. Well, that's it for this week's episode. And remember to like, subscribe, and comment and hit the notification bell. You know, the creator of Dexter's Lab, Samurai Jack, and the Hotel Transylvania series. You know, the creator of, if you like the video, to Double D in the Morning. And join me next week, next week, for... Double D in the Friday morning, episode 39, the story of Jindy Tartakovsky. And just to let you know, this is the title card and thumbnail for, for my new video. Double D in the Friday morning, episode 39, History of Cartoons, part 30, the story of Jindy Tartakovsky. The creator of Dexter's Lab, Samurai Jack, and the Hotel Transylvania series.